Hello everyone, welcome back to a new video. So, time to rekindle back an old favorite of mine as well as other people's. Yes my friends, time to rekindle back Tarantula Mythbuster video. So this is the 48th episode. So I know I've been putting it off for a couple of weeks now, I'm kind of busy with school and other work. So I was contemplating what species I should do because I covered most of my tarantulas that I've dealt with in my other videos, but Peter messaged me on YouTube yesterday via private message and he wanted some information about the Viridaceous species. Uh, he wanted to know my personal experience on them since I owned them for about a year and a half and he's seen a lot of videos on them. So I thought to myself, oh wow, why not I do one since it's not really available on arachnivores as well as information is concerned. and. Now it's a spider that's slowly coming into the hobby so a lot of people are starting to buy one and they kind of want more information about it so all good reason to make a new one and to give you all the information that I know about this particular species at this time and at this moment. So without further ado let's get started this is typical John 3000 Mythbuster video style series. On my blackboard I have all of the information required for this video. So it's pretty cool. So let's get started. So further ado, show you the specimen first. Got a birdie one, isn't she? So this is my four inch female Viridaceous species Madagascar. Now this particular spider and the genus Viridaceous was first discovered by Simon in 1889. So these are known as true spiders, these are not actual tarantulas, and they come from the family Stenidae, which is a class of wandering spiders, or in Europe, running spiders. So wandering spiders are a different class of spiders, um, you have different eye, eye arrangements than tarantulas, um, I'll show you the eye arrangement as well as their chloroceri move in a different pattern. So like huntsmen's, they move their chloroceri from side to side versus tarantulas and other megalomorphs that move their chloroceri in a downward and upward motion. So, uh, yeah. So there's pretty much a lot of several common names that you can go by for the spider, uh, namely the Madagascar fishing spider, which is kind of a misnomer because they don't really fish. Uh, there's also called the zebra spider. It makes sense because they have a band of black and white all over their legs. Uh, they're also called the Madagascar wandering spider or the Madagascar black and white wandering spider. Whatever name you choose, it's up to you. So the scientific name for this species is known as Viridaceous species Madagascar. And the way we pronounce it is as follows. Viridaceous. That's Viridaceous. Now, I did go to uh, Norman Platnick's World Spider Catalog, and the only Viridaceous that came into the picture is Viridaceous species fasciatus. So this could be possibly the real fasciatus for species Madagascar. And for those of you who are starting to learn the scientific names, congratulations. This is a great way to start to learn the hobby because as you know from experience, common names are really not going to do much justice for you. Apparently when you go to a lot of pet stores, they're probably going to mislabel them. So whenever you see the word SP, period, that simply means species. Okay, so I'm going to go show you on the computer what the specimens look like and their eye arrangements. So here they have, I think six eyes. You have one over here, one over here, and then you have four eyes right over here. So this is the female form, also called Waldmorm. This is also a female, this is also a female. Uh, I think this is a young male, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, this is the male. This is what they look like. So you can see oh, a lot more different. 
Uh, they're much more brown in color than the female. Uh, not as vibrant and a lot smaller bodied. So Veridaceous Madagascar males are probably going to be around the two and a half to three inch mark. They are going to have bulbous pedipalps as all mature males do. And females are probably going to be like four, four and a half inches. So these are really, really large true spiders. So pretty much the female you see here is pretty much the full grown size of these species. Yeah. So typical lifespans for the Madagascar wandering spider. I would assume uh, five to 10 years if it's female and two to five years if it's male, depending on how you take care of them. So they're not exactly gonna be extremely long lived as a tarantula, but it does pretty well. So uh, with that said, it is an old world species because it does come from Madagascar. So you might be wondering, oh, okay, let's associate this with tarantulas. What do we know about old world tarantulas? They have very defensive to aggressive temperaments as well as they have significant venom. Now, this is true in some cases, but not true in other cases. So the temperament of these Viridaceous species Madagascar is some people say that they're aggressive. My specimen is not at all. I have never seen any threat posture or any aggression from this female other than that I feed crickets too. She'll go nuts over crickets, but when I prod her, she won't give me a threat posture. But I will warn you that this species is flipping fast. I mean, if you try to prod her, she's going to go out and she's going to escape before you can say what happened. So it's really a good idea to make sure that you close a lid and try to interact with the species as less as possible. Now, just because it's, it's a non-aggressive spider, that doesn't mean you should handle it. Now, the venom is really not clearly studied. And we know because it is a stenid, which is in the same family as the elusive Funitra fera, which is pretty much the Brazilian wandering spider or the banana spider that's responsible for causing the most fatalities. So we know offhand that that species of spider is the most dangerous in the world, but not every wandering spider will have the similar venom. So for Viridaceous species, I really cannot say what kind of venom it is. I don't want to assume anything, but just really be careful of how you deal with them uh, because they could be dangerous or they could be just completely harmless. So I've never been bitten by any of my spiders. I have never been bitten by this one. She doesn't really give me much problems when I water her or feed her. Just I have to watch the speed because she is really fast. Okay, so now keeping conditions, they're pretty easy. So pretty much uh, the enclosures you see in this video is pretty much what I actually use. So over here is cork bark mounted on a side. These do well in an arboreal setup. Uh, you give them moist substrate, eco earth. You can provide a water dish if you want to, but make sure it's shallow enough for her to drink from and to get away from because if you use too deep of a water dish, uh, they might drown. And they spend a lot of their time uh, climbing. So yeah, so you just make sure to give them an arboreal setup. So the enclosure you see before you is literally a 32 ounce del tall deli cup with air holes around the circumference of the jar. Okay, so with that said, temperature wise, you wanna keep them around room temperature, like 75 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. They'll also do well if you keep them a little cooler. I generally keep my room around 77, 78 during the day and around 73, 74 at night because I need to sleep in. Usually I sleep much more better in a colder room than in a hotter room. Right now it's really warm in here. It's around 80 degrees Celsius. So sorry 80 degrees Fahrenheit so I'm gonna be putting on the fan to cool off the room 
Uh, okay, as far as breeding is concerned, um, I don't really have much information until I saw this website on the reptileforum.co.uk and from his experience he bred the species and he got as a result 91 babies so pretty much between 50 to 200 is pretty much the average ballpark figure so I'll include this in the video description so you know where I got this information from now unfortunately I really don't have any breeding experience on these species because I haven't bred these myself to know if they're easy or good with their male counterparts. But Tarantula Canada is getting an import very soon and I believe they do have some males available so I'll be sure to pick one up and try to mate this gal in the near future uh, to see how many babies I got. But I could speculate 50 to 100 is pretty much the average ballpark of a true spider. Uh, what else can I say about them? Oh yes, my personal recommendations. I seriously recommend getting the spider if you're going to expand into the true spiders. These are a very, very nice species to get. Very lifelike, very alive, very bold, superb eaters. If you noted in any of my tarantula feeding videos, these are the only true spider that frequently come up in my videos and I do film the best eaters in my collection. Uh, feeding regiments uh, is a topic I don't really normally discuss in my feeding videos because they're varied and people have different schedules. Uh, my personal recommendation if you want to feed the tarantula or other true spider, feed them like I would say for this species like one cricket every week or so or maybe once every 10 to 14 days. I feed mine personally every month as you probably noted from my feeding videos. Every time I upload a new feeding video, that is when I feed them. And as you can see, my female is just healthy and doing extremely well. So if you're going to be collecting these species, I don't suggest getting this one as your first one if unless you're, you worked with other tarantulas before, simply because these are very, very skittish and the speed might overwhelm some people. But other than that, you know, it's, it's a lovely species to to get. It kind of reminds you of a Pocotheria species because of the band on their legs and their color. He called it the Beetlejuice spider. But these are pretty cool wandering spiders to get. As I said, fantastic eaters. They reach a pretty sizable size for a true spider. So with that said, I do hope you enjoyed this Mythbuster video and learning about all of the Madagascar wandering spider. Viridaceous species, possibly fasciatus. Awesome. So, hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more vids to come.